All right, tick tock, tick tock. It's five after the hour. Let's get this party started. Hi, everyone. My name is Ryan Neustetcher. I am the senior uh, managing editor for MS Cloud Insider. I'm also the senior director of marketing here at Five Nine. I'm joined by Robert Cordini, MVP in data center and cloud today, and we're going to talk about tips, tricks, and proven methodologies to simplify software-defined networking across private and public cloud. So, if you're starting on your uh, software-defined networking initiative, if you're thinking about it, uh, we're going to show you uh, some things that you need to think about, and then we're going to show you at the end how we can make things a lot easier. So, uh, you know, to kick things off, uh, let me tell you a little bit about our, my, my guest speaker today, and we can go on to the next slide. I'm here with Robert Cordini. Uh, Robert Cordini is a superstar in the Microsoft MVP community, uh, multiple time uh, MVP, data center and cloud. He's also the, the senior uh, uh, director for product management here at Five9. Um, I'll kick this show off to Rob in just a couple of minutes, but uh, Rob, why don't you say hello to everybody and make sure that everybody believes that you are really here. Yes, I do exist. Okay. And Ryan, you took on. <laughs> yes, so you do exist. So that's great. So uh, remember, everybody, uh, save your questions. If you have questions, answer them in the chat in the GoToWebinar console. Uh, we're going to be giving away uh, a couple of Amazon gift cards. So we're going to be doing a drawing towards the end of the presentation. So make sure that you stay on to the end. You have to be on uh, to, to stay on and win. And also, uh, we will be sending as a follow-up a SDN um, uh, checklist. Uh, so that's a pretty cool kind of reference guide that only people who attend this webinar are going to be able to receive. So with that being said, let me show you kind of some of the things that we're going to be talking about today. Next slide, Rob. Oh, you did know we what? go into this? Uh, we didn't. We didn't. So before we begin, uh, if you if you're new to Five Nine, if you haven't heard of us before, uh, Five Nine offers a, a unified cloud management and security platform. And uh, one of the things that we're about to start doing uh, in a release, and this is a sneak peek because we're probably going to go live tomorrow, is we have a a, a brand new. Uh, software-defined networking functionality that saves a whole lot of uh, uh, SDN configuration costs, saves time, makes SDN a whole lot easier so that you can uh, make more efficiencies uh, and, and make your whole uh, networking operation more effective at, at your company. So we're excited to tell you a little bit about that uh, later. But if you haven't heard of Five9, uh, we are kind of the preeminent um, private cloud uh, management and security company uh, for uh, uh, Microsoft. So that being said, I'm going to go ahead and tell you about some of the things that we're going to talk about today. So we're going to talk a little bit about, you know, what is software-defined networking, uh, who's responsible, how kind of the networking landscape has changed uh, since kind of traditional networking to uh, this new software-defined space. We'll kind of talk about some best practices for SDN configuration. Uh, we'll talk about some some tips that you should you know know, and a lot of that has to do with monitoring. Uh, we'll talk about some common misconfigurations that uh, we see a lot of customers and we hear a lot of people in the community making. Uh, so we want to give you a heads up on that before starting your initiative or if you already have SDN implemented, maybe some things that you want to check out. Then we're going to talk to you a little bit about how 5.9 uh, really um, can help in the SDN management and security and speeding things up for you uh, kind of space. We'll go into some Q&A, some next steps, and we'll do our contest. And then we'll kind of give you uh, a chance to, to answer some, some questions towards the very end. Uh, so with that being said, I'm really pleased to uh, bring Rob Cordini on and let's get to it. Great. Thanks, Ryan. I appreciate being here. Um, and let's get started and dive right in. So, we're here today to talk about software-defined networking, which is a relatively, we'll say, past five to ten year, uh, five to ten year term, and let's compare what our traditional networking space has been like, and then how we how that compares to software-defined networking. So, in traditional networking, you know, the functionality is implemented through a dedicated hardware appliance and involves routers, switches. <clears throat> Firewalls, application controllers, etc. Um, each appliance must be manually configured and updated by um, the admin. Uh, and so, on the flip side, with um, software-defined networks, is that we decouple or it decouples the hardware from the software, and it separates that control plane from the data plane. 
Um, the control plane is like the administration of the network, including setting up packet processing rules which determine how to send traffic. Um, the data plane, on the other hand, in SDN, is carries out decisions made in the control plane console and forces the traffic, which is essentially packet processing. Um, SDN enables hardware to be controlled and managed from a centralized application. So let's talk about who is responsible for network configuration right now in the hardware defined model. So typically you'll have a virtualization admin, whether they're doing Hyper-V or any other hypervisor. Um, you typically have a storage admin where it's dealing with your SAN um, storage or whatever type of storage you happen to have. Um, and then you have your network admin. And essentially that's dealing with all your network pieces, your VLAN tagging, et cetera. And all these guys have to work very closely together um, in order to make sure we have a, um, a true and trident and high available network um, or, an app and, or a you know, VM or an application. So in the software defined model, um, you do have a virtualization admin, but you have a higher ROI on this. And let me explain why. Because the virtualization admin knows how to bring up servers and virtual machines, but they also know how to bring up storage in the software defined world, which is essential on the network now. And it knows how to interact with physical hardware. And lastly, it knows how to interact with open standards and protocols such as BGP, um, <clears throat> a number of other protocols, uh, OSPF, et cetera. So essentially in this model, you have a hard ROI because you're consolidating these roles. So Rob, uh, you know, I've spoken to, to several customers uh, and, and when I've been at the trade shows and, and I've talked to uh, network admins, I've talked to storage admins, and I think that a lot of people are you know, wondering, well, you know, I'm a hardware guy. I've been doing hardware networking for the longest time. Like, how, how can I learn more about software-defined networking? What do I have to do to get into that skill set? Uh, and whether if I'm an IT manager or an IT director, and I need to kind of take some resources and shift them to, so that they have that uh, virtualization admin um, skill set, what do they need to do? Oh, there's lots of resources out there. Obviously, you can down, um, you can build hey, a hyper. There, there's a lot. I'm sorry. There's a lot of feedback. Lot sure, of feedback. sure, sorry. How's that? Right? Is that better? Um, yeah, I think that's better. Sorry okay. about sorry about that, folks. Yeah, mics and uh, demo uh, demo uh, gods, I guess. <laughs> so. Um, has, there are a lot of resources that someone can get into this uh, particular arena. Um, obviously, we, you can build out your own um, Hyper-V cluster um, and then essentially use tools like 5.9 Manager to build out your SDN. Um, and again, we make it very easy to build out SDN. Um, we have very simple, easy to use tools. Um, and also, if you really want to understand concepts of the SDN deployments, um, Azure and a lot of the Azure related docs really do go through and really give you the, um, the understanding of exactly how SDN breaks out and how those layers are extracted out from the hardware. Does that answer that question for you, or do you want any more? Yeah, right. No, <laughs> I, you I, need any more. <laughs> I think that that's good, but you know, I also know that there are going to be a lot of people that are, are, are looking at how the software-defined model has changed kind of the, the role landscape, how uh, we, now we're seeing, I'm seeing based on the slide that uh, the roles have shifted, and a lot of these uh, admins who were traditionally kind of responsible for their own part is being consolidated into a single role. Absolutely, and that's essentially where it's rolling. Again, it's software defined, so everything from the network layer to the storage layer, all the way up to the VM layer, is essentially consolidated under one roof. And when you're now a virtualization admin, you're expected to actually have a lot more responsibilities traditionally than the traditional other admins like storage admin, network admins. Right. Um, so it's really a consolidation of that, not you know losing these roles, it's a consolidation. Right, so. and so I, I think that probably some good advice for our audience is uh, you know, to, to, to build up, to beef up some of your software skills, to learn more and attend webinars like this about software-defined networking, and also try and adopt tools that help make the process of software-defined networking easier. Absolutely. And like I said, 5.9 Manager is a great tool to really start getting into your um, 
Five9 Manager Data Center. It's a great tool to get your um, feet wet and actually play with and deploying SDN networks, logical networks, local networks, etc. So let's move on. What are the advantages of SDN? So the advantages are increased operational agility. So we have a lot more efficiency around network resources. Um, when you're dealing with SCN, you can really bandwidth on demand. And you can really program directly into that software layer, uh, into that API. Uh, you have centralized network management. So you're managing that entire network as a single unit. Um, the enterprise optimization and planning um, including dynamic network reconfiguration. So it's another very great benefit, um, especially when you need to be extremely agile. Um, provides a really single place for applications to interact, authentications, et cetera. Um, and provides centralized security control point where security information can be distributed evenly through business networks across multiple sites. Again, another uh, definition, uh, another advantage of SDN networks is to be able to push out these security policies on the fly. And then um, uh, we have uh, exert external control. Sorry, I was reading that wrong. <laughs> um, which enables network applications and provides <clears throat> easy integration to leverage existing knowledge, experience, and tools. And then Fender neutral um, with open standards base. You know, you reduce the risk of getting locked in or technical size because of a vendor specific hardware requirements, which is a big deal. Um, there's always been the biggest problem in the world is it's usually not, not the software stack when you've been building out there, uh, building out things, but that's usually, you know, firmware updates, a lot of spe vendor specific requirements, um, even on the hypervisor, et cetera. So, you know, you essentially want to be ven vendor neutral with open standards space. Um, it can also in uh, interface with NetFlows, OpenFlows, and other switch manufacturers. Um, it's easier to maintain. Um, it reduces the need for hardware refreshes and manual updates. It lowers that barrier of entry. You know, network hardware has now become more of a commodity, really driving down costs. What are the challenges around SDN? Rob, yes, there are challenges. Yeah, can, sure. Can we go back, uh, you know, just for a second? I have a question. So, we, you know, we're talking about the SD, uh, the uh, advantages of SDN. Uh, you know, are there any advantages still for, you know, traditional hardware-based networking? Or is SDN, SDN kind of the go-forward standard that, that everybody should be thinking about? In my opinion, it's a go-forward standard. Um, if people still have physical hardware and it's fairly new, Mm -hmm. um, there, there's a number of ways you can take advantage of SDN on-prem, um, including even Azure Stack. Um, so, but go, the go forward method essentially is to do SDN all around software defined networking. Um, and again, it's really a commodity, um, buying out servers and stuff like that, and then building out your, <clears throat> essentially your SDN on top of that. Um, cause traditionally you're essentially dedicating one OS to a piece of server hardware, which is obviously a very cost prohibitive things where you could essentially have a piece of hardware, a cluster hardware, and have a lot more density of VMs on that. Does that make sense to you? Yeah, I know it does. And and I think what's really kind of coming out during your explanation of this is that there, there are some significant technical benefits, but also some uh, business benefits of implementing SDN for some of these uh, time savings, the no vendor lock-in, it seems like a much safer, uh, more mature kind of model. Absolutely. It's a much more mature uh, model. And again, it's always evolving. Uh, the bare term of software-defined networking means it is constantly evolving into newer features, newer types of things you can do with packer filtering or intelligence on packer filtering, et cetera, or even intelligence on NetFlow traffic. So there's a lot of advantages, especially, you know, for the future of SDN. Got it. Are we, are we ready for the next one, the challenges now? Yes, there are challenges. We are ready. <laughs> so uh, you want to make sure that your controller reliability and, and it has stability, which is very important. So when you have an SDN controller. Um, you want to have be prepared for unexpected interactions between features. Um, 
And essentially, this is all about, you know, different types of uh, features that would leverage that SDN. Um, controller security, you know, um, and you want to make sure that controller is, you know, really kind of locked down and, and you know, controlled access. Um, and it can run on a general purpose computer and OS. Network sprawl. Um, um, STNs, you know, really need to um, make it tempting to create countless network segments, but each new network center uh, segment introduces its own risk. So essentially, you know, as you get into SDN, this, you got to be careful of getting into network sprawl where you just keep on creating these networks just because you do for one or two servers or so. Uh, you still are going to go through the traditional methods of how you would traditionally set up a network with physical hardware. You're not going to go sprawling out networks. The same rules when you do um, SDN. Um, sorry, go ahead, Brian. Nope, go ahead. Okay, service or applications fraud. So you want new services can introduce um, security threats as programmers and network administrators um, are randomly um, introduced to at-risk code. So again, start, you know, building out a lot of service and applications for all can cause a lot of number of issues, especially when you have administrators um, uh, really unwitting to introduce at-risk code. Um, so that's essentially really another big challenge is around application sprawl. So Rob, before we, we go yeah. on to some of the planning, uh, you know, we talked about challenges, but you know, can you help us understand, uh, you know, how do people who are planning uh, a move to a software defined network avoid some of these challenges? Is it better documentation? Is it setting permissions? Uh, you know, what, what planning, what? planning, 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 I can't mm. say enough about planning, um, really understanding how your, your networks are going to be laid out, how your applications are going to be laid out across different networks. Because sometimes you have front-end applications that are exposed to the internet, right? And then you have back-end uh, uh, applications that are essentially um, dealing uh, the back-end of the front-end applications, for example, databases. Um, so um, there's a lot of planning involved with that and essentially in that particular case right there there's two vnets right now two um two different networks that essentially you need right off the bat and then you have to do some essentially um, um security um between the networks and then so you don't expose your database to the um the pure internet so i mean that's that's an example but people can go a little crazy with network sprawl um and um did that answer some of your question? <laughs> yeah, it did. Great. And, and and this is just a reminder to the audience. If you have a question on any of the dialogue that Rob and I are having at any point during the presentation, please feel free to put it in the chat box, in the question box, and, and we'll answer as many as, as we can at the end. All righty. So planning. And like I said, planning, planning, planning. You really need to understand um, everything you need to deal with. Um, you need to determine if your environment will match the hardware and software prerequisites, you know. Um, you, you know, fit your physical network. Um, the, um, it, you want to ensure that you have access to the physical network devices to be able to configure um, uh, VLANs, routing, BGP, uh, bridging, RDMA technology, which is very cool, um, data center bridging, um, and ROCE. Um, which is Rocky based on RDMA technology. Um, so again, um, you really need to um, understand, again, mapping out your proposed network. Very, very important. So the next part of this is really uh, understanding that once you map out your network, you know, you really need to understand about um, your physical hosts. And you need to understand what network interface cards and switches are, are um, and what their capabilities are. Uh, what is their standards and what is their tagging protocol? Um, do um, uh, you know, uh, on the computer host, essentially, when you're planning to do software-defined networking, make sure you have uh, Windows Server 2016 installed. Um, 
you need Hyper-V installed. Um, you also need an external Hyper-V vSwitch created with at least one physical adapter connected to the man, uh, management logical network. Um, so once you've done that, you're mapping out your proposed network. How many subnets, how, sorry, how many subnets will you create um, out of all these things that you actually are you know, gathering? Uh, will you use shielded subnets, um, end user subnets, um, product subnets, or even public subnets? Um, <clears throat> the, uh, you want to plan routing between your networks. You need to be able to map connections between the networks. And you, you need to be able to determine your VLAN and subject access. You know, always ask yourself the who, what, when, and where of access. I mean, that's very, very important is who, what, when, and where. <laughs> and you need to be able to map out your access controls, including the roles. Um, <clears throat> And you need to be able to um, address spaces on the VNet. You need to know, map out those address spaces on the uh, VNet. <clears throat> and then finally, and actually there's two more, um, you need to determine, are you doing any peering? Um, are you going to be doing the, anything with VNet to VNet, um, which is important um, um, between potentially like Azure, subscriptions in one Azure subscription to another, um, or even Azure to on-prem. Um, will you use other networks for peering, um, which are important? Um, sometimes that comes out when you're talking about um, Express Realm. Um, so again, you need to, uh, uh, some of the things you really do need to understand. And then finally, you need to analyze your projected traffic. Um, will any of this traffic or data ingress or egress from the internet um, uh, will I only be using for VPN to access Azure? Um, or will I use something called Express Route, which is essentially MPLS, um, but um, Azure's version of, versions of it? Oh, Ryan, you had a question? Uh, you, you know I do. Uh, so, so I do have a question. So I mean, how much, how different is this planning methodology than the traditional planning methodology that if you were to go on a hardware base, is it much different or does it follow the same principles and, you know, and, and kind of like what? If, uh, other than I would say the software and hardware requirements, um, the principles are very the same um, because you really, these are all the typical things when you're planning a infrastructure, or even a, you know, a new, a net new network, you need to understand what the proposed network's going to look like, you need to understand all these different things. And yes, this is traditionally, uh, other than, you know, some of the things around hardware and software prerequisites, other mm -hmm. than that, you know, does that answer the question? Yeah. And, and so, I mean, are you planning this out with, with Visio? Are you using Excel? You know, what are some of the tools that you recommend to people when they say, you know what, Rob, I want to get started with planning, uh, you know, my transition sure. to SDN. You know, how do, what, what do I use? What do I get started with? Uh, best tool that I use is Visio. Um, there are a number of other tools out there, depending on if you have an existing network or you're planning out a net, new network. Um, Visio actually has uh, a, a cool plugin. Um, I can't remember the name of it offhand, but essentially does a scanning of your existing network and then automatically maps it out in Visio, which is pretty cool. And then you can make some adjustments. Um, That's cool. And, and you know, I think that I should let everybody know that that Rob, once you figure out what that is, we'll put that in the follow up with the with the presentation. Sure. Yeah, and it's, the slide a, it's a Visio add-in. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. Um, and then you know that helps with even an existing network. Um, there are other tools out there um, that, you know, monitoring tools where you can, like, uh, Five9 um, Manager Data Center, where we can essentially pull out, you know, what VMs and what VNets are out there and then start mapping things out on a piece of paper. But again, it, it comes down to, you know, are you a net new or existing network? And also, one thing we didn't mention here is how we would transition between networks with this application workloads. If it, if it was an existing one. So uh, that hopefully answers your question, Ryan. Yeah, thank you. Okay, cool.
So SDN implementation. So the first thing you do is you build out your software-defined networks. Again, stuff you've already planned on. The next one um, is you're going to be build out your resource groups. And resource groups are going to allow you to basically couple these applications into one to be able to see certain things like costing, um, uh, um, uh, throughput, ingress, uh, degress of an entire resource group, etc. Um, you want to build out your VNets, um, which are very important. These are your different subnets or um, VLANs, if you want to call them. And essentially, are you going to have a production VLAN? Are you going to have a, rub, um, a, a web front end VLAN? Are you going to have a user VLAN, etc.? Rob, getting a little bit of feedback, then, just so you know. Sure. Yeah, I think it's because I'm too far away. All right. And then you need to perform comprehensive testing, you know. Um, so, for example, you know, VLAX, uh, you know, VNets lack built-in testing tools. So you need to essentially put a VM on that network, um, maybe install Apache uh, on, or IIS, um, and then ping that VM. Open um, RDP into that VM, or even if it's a Linux box, you know, SSH, like it says on the screen, um, if you're running Apache on Linux. Um, and then... Which is really cool um, with Azure is you can use Azure Sif Serial Console, which is really cool. Is essentially is a console view into Linux VMs, which has been difficult in the past. Uh, Windows VMs do have console views, but Linux VM is really cool. Um, um, and then you can also compare VM to historical stats. You know, looking at stats such as data disks, max IPS. Um, I'm sorry, Max IOPS, <laughs> local uh, SSD, and load balancing. So, management versus traditional, okay, I'm sorry, management, traditional versus SDN. So, traditional, you set up well known protocol parameters and track configuration changes. And then on the SDN side, you configure customized and ever evolving software, set up data, and control plane. And on availability, and so traditional, you set up alternative routes uh, in case of a failure. You know, alternative routes could, you know, uh, uh, or you can even use something called round robin, which just allows you to do similar to what alternative routes does. And then in the SDN world, but by the way, those aren't perfect um, things to use in the hardware traditional world. SDN, you can configure alternative forwarding device behavior in case of a failure, which is a lot more intelligent. Um, and I would actually uh, even incur this as very something similar to BGP, but a lot more advanced. Um, and then you have uh, performance. In the traditional world, you know, we have to assign and reserve bandwidth, ensure QoS configuration, um, which does, uh, in a lot of cases, sometimes separate hardware or even larger hardware firewalls, et cetera. And in the SDN world, you can monitor the performance of network application and then adjust that connection quality and data plane and control plane, all done at um, the SDN um, uh, plane. Um, here we go. Sorry about that. Isolation and security. Traditional, you control network access and prevent intrusion, spoofing, and DDoS attacks. And these are traditional tools that either install on your server or maybe have at your um, uh, edge gateway like a firewall or um, threat management system. And then the STM, um, SDN uh, approach, you use cloud security components such as virtual firewalls to grant isolation to network applications and it prevents eavesdropping and captures of traffic. Rob, I have a question for you on, sure. the, on the security side. So our, our you know, people with malicious intent, hackers, uh, mm -hmm. you know, people who are are targeting organizations, are they doing anything to target organizations who uh, may have, uh, you know, traditional hardware in place, uh, you know, and, and are they explo exploiting some of these vulnerabilities, you know, given yes. that SDN? Uh, mm -hmm. um, well, in the SDN world, there's a lot of things we can do, especially in firewalling where we can essentially hide the presence of what we're running, even the OS and fingerprinting. It's called OS fingerprinting and stuff like that. You can do some of those things to an extent on traditional, but I would say there's no, um, I would say there's, 
what the the difference right now is that there's mostly traditional network management on premise. There's no concept of really Azure Stack. There are some deployments of that, but um, and a lot of it. But essentially, there's no real SDN on premise. So if an attacker would traditionally look for maybe an on premise network, and you can look at that by hitting service providers, right? <laughs> um, versus if you had an SDN deployment and there's a lot of security behind, you know, Azure, for example, um, people tend to stay away from those type of um, deployments because there's a lot more eyes on them than you would traditionally do on your on-premise environment and traditional environment because we don't have the time to sit and look at these things all day long versus you know, in the traditional SDN world, there's a lot of dedication to this and a lot of automation around this and a lot of AI around this. That makes sense? Yeah, got it. Cool. So monitoring tips. So monitoring is very important. Some very important metrics to monitor, especially when you're um, dealing with scaling, uh, scale out or scale up, um, is egress and uh, uh, Ingress and egress uh, VNets, uh, very important traffic's coming in and out and how much is doing on a daily, weekly, monthly basis. Um, you also want to do, um, and now that, that's VNets, meaning if you had multiple VMs on that VNet, you can see all that traffic. But this one is in, in, ingress or egress out of your NICs, which is important. So you want to see those individual um, um, VM statistics, et cetera. And then another um, very big thing you want to do is, if, especially if you're using load balancing um, for whether it's for high availability or even for um, uh, performance, um, you want to monitor your load balancing network. Um, you want to make sure that the load matches your policy. Are you doing round robin, meaning you're sending one person here and one person there to one server or another? Are you, uh, you know, equally distributing the load? Are you um, um, other there are other techniques. Are you sending half the load here and half the load here based on the number of users coming in? Again, there's too much. There's a lot of things you can do, but it's very as you can say it's here. It's very easy to misconfigure. So again, make sure that your load matches your policy. Monitor uptimes of solutions and services. Very very important. You don't want to just monitor. The the uptime of a particular VM and a NIC card, you also want to make sure that those applications are actually running, the services are running, the actual applications are functioning, et cetera. Um, and it's all the way down to that network layer. So common SDN threats, um, SDN specific threats for, and this is kind of goes into um, some of Ryan's questions from a few slides ago, is uh, implementing general security best practices and use cloud security um, um, solutions. You know, it, and this is where I like to actually call um, the death of the defaults. <laughs> uh, use best practices, but definitely make sure you go through and really, um, you know, remove files that are not needed, um, remove, you know, uh, SDN apps that are not needed, um, you want to make sure all your pages are locked down so they can't do any manipulation of information. Um, um, and then obviously software and virus attacks. You want to make sure your site um, or your front end web application is, is not you know, prone to these type of things. Is there any other types of access? And then again, are you making sure that there's all unauthorized access is taken care of? Are only admins getting in and specific groups of admins getting in that are know enough to be in that uh, particular um, SDN? And then also you want to have, you know, which is very, very important as a, as a threat is SDN sniffing and diversion. And this is more about looking at the traffic outside of an SDN and trying to understand exactly um, what, what's going on and be able to do some kind of man in middle, middle attack. Um, some of, those are some of the common uh, um, traffic. Again, these have been common in the traditional, world, the traditional we'll say, uh, on-premise or even uh, physical hardware world. But again, something you definitely have to look out for. And then 
general network virtualization threats, and this is a normal virtualization trick. You know, you definitely want to implement security best practices. You know, you want to make sure the virtualized doesn't have any host abuse. Um, you know, and that comes down to you know unauthorized access um, or installing non-essential applications. Um, you don't want network virtualization bypassing. <clears throat> um, also. On the infrastructure threats, you want to have you have physical threats, meaning actual access to the data center. Um, is that all that access been locked down? Um, are only certain type of people are allowed into that data center? Um, you have damage and loss by uh, hurricanes and actual you know um, disaster events. You have failures and malfunctions. Now, um, when you're gen this these kind of threats are generally covered by a cloud provider. But if you're on-prem running these kind of things, they're kind of difficult to kind of go through. Um, but the interesting part of this whole thing is that failures, malfunction, damages, outages, disasters, um, uh, um, unless uh, those things are expected to happen, hardware at some point is expected to happen. This is where you have essentially high availability. This is where a cloud provider provides lots of redundancy in their methods of storage, et cetera. Um, this, there are actually some terms that are happening on Azure called local replicated storage and, and stuff of that nature. So that takes an account for these type of you know, damage, loss, failures, outages, et cetera. And then obviously you have the legal implementations of um, SDN threats. Common SDN security mistakes, using a public IPs in your network. <laughs> Very dangerous, um, especially when you're dealing with SDN. You don't want anybody inside your SDN network, especially the wide, uh, the World Wide Web. Um, opening up network rules to the world, not a great idea, um, especially um, if you're dealing with troubleshooting and you're setting up initially. It probably wouldn't be a bad idea, but you got to definitely uh, close those rules up once you're done and do an analysis of your VM or your VNet to make sure everything's good. Um, over relying on open source packages without researching known or suspected vulnerability. That's a big, big one, especially in the Linux world. Um, there's a ton of open source packages um, between uh, lots of dis different repositories. There are, you know, for example, WordPress, but then there are all tons of other blogging software like Ghost and and even lots of more CMS software. So don't be over relying on open source packages unless you really know it's been um, that it's uh, if it has any known or suspected vulnerabilities. WordPress is actually probably the one of the most um, common open source package out there, but that's one that it's heavily developed on. Secure SDN security best practices: secure your own data. Very very important. By default, protect access to your VMs, meaning who has access to those particular VMs, do they need to have access, et cetera. Um, use network security groups um, in Azure. Um, and this is a set, network security groups essentially are, or NSGs, are essentially firewall rules. And you can control what objects and ports can have in, ingress or egress to the network, and it provides a second layer. And you want to control your routing behavior. And um, very important, where things route to you, is it routing back to on-premise over a gateway or is it going to another VNet, et cetera. Um, and enforce tunneling, oh, enable force tunneling. Deploy virtual network. So here's some more best practices. You want to deploy ne uh, virtual network appliances and DMZs. You want to make sure you have built-in virtual firewalls or third-party firewalls. You want to make sure you have a security solution that includes uh, capabilities like um, intrusion detection, vulnerability management, application control, web filtering, agentless antivirus, and botnet protection. And you want to avoid exposure to the internet with a dedicated WAN links. Uh, with dedicated WAN links. You also want to optimize uptime and performance and use load balancing when necessary. Um, also, disable RDP access to your Azure uh, VMs. You want to ma manage VM security posture and consistently monitor VM performance. And let's get rolling. So we have a demo right now of how 5.9 Manager simplifies SDN management. Um, let me actually pull out of my slide deck here and bring up my I uh, 
Give me a moment. There we go. Sure. And, and Rob, before you, <laughs> before you begin, because I, I do know that there are a lot of uh, five, nine customers on the call, this is going to be a sneak pre peek of what we're uh, going to be doing with um, Manager Data Center 2.2, which is going to be coming out really shortly. So uh, we're adding a lot of new uh, SDN functionality that comes, uh, you know, 100% free with the licensing cost uh, already with 5.9 Manager. So some really cool stuff. Uh, interested in your feedback. If you have any questions about the product, uh, you know, definitely, or anything else that Rob's talked about so far in the slide tech, Again, please put it into the chat window, and we'll get uh, to as many as we can at the end of the at the end of the presentation. Great. Um, so I'll give a couple minute demo on uh, Five Nine Manager. Um, this is actually Five Nine Manager two point two, and it's a, uh, a upcoming release that we have coming out um, that we're adding STN management. And um, this is actually a fresh install, so you can kind of get a quick idea of how quickly you can get up and running with Five Nine Manager. Um, right now, what I'm doing is a discovery because I have 5.9 Manager up and running installed. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit use credentials I know that can actually discover these particular ports and actually communicate with these servers. So I actually put manually node 1 and node 2 so it doesn't have to sit through a long discovery process. Sorry about that. Hello. Wow, that was a... It's always the demo problems. <laughs> Try again here. And let's go here and type in NOD. There we go. So it's going to, um, it's searching my. Um, network right now for those particular two nodes. As you can see, it found it. Um, I already have an agent installed on here, as you can see. But typically, if you're adding it, um, it will actually install the latest agent onto it. As you can see, it's installing an agent. So I'm actually going to let it sit there for a moment, because we can't do anything with uh, networking at the moment until this finishes. Um, and what it's doing right now is actually installing the agent on, on those two particular nodes, Hyper-V nodes, um, so we can essentially um, uh, provide management to that node. As you can see here uh, on MDC, um, we have a tab, um, a tabbed interface on the top, and we have sidebars on the on the left. And essentially, we have these uh, different um, rib. I'm sorry, ribbon on the top and tabbed on the left. <laughs> um, and um, you essentially have these different modules like Hyper-V management. Uh, monitoring of your uh, Hyper-V network, um, backups, so you can do some backups of your network. And then you have administration, and that deals with all your permissions and RPAC controls, et cetera. So this is almost ready. It should be done in just a moment. Does anybody have any questions while I'm waiting for this agent to, uh, that we can answer in the, from the chat window? Ryan. I don't think we do at the moment. Nope, nope. We hey, Rob? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now we've got a, a few uh, really good questions oh, here that I can, I can go. go through. Yeah. Um, I see them. Yeah. So, uh, you know, we have one question that asks uh, says, surely you still need to design and build out physical networks. Are there specific hardware vendors required to interoperate with SDN? No. Um, most manufacturers, it comes down to protocol support. Um, and making sure that they support that. Obviously, Cisco is one big vendor, but there are many, many other switch vendors out there, um, and even software-defined switch vendors like um, I can't even remember off the set at hand, but there are a couple of them out there. As you can see, oh, I'm going to switch back right now. But as long as they support particular protocols, and we can give you those requirements in the notes. Um, that's really what matters um, in the SDN world. Um, the um, um, but I will say not any switch would work, um, especially dumb switches that don't support VLAN tagging or anything of that nature. So as you can see here, I've added uh, node one and node two. Um, a couple things that you'll notice here is I actually have storage that I popped in here. Um, this is CSV storage. Actually, can show you that backup storage, et cetera. Um, so cool stuff I can do is I can create additional 
storage off my CSC volumes. And then essentially, I can also build out my um, SDN deployment. So right here, as you can see, it's already been built out. But you can see right now is that this NIC is essentially a local net. That NIC is a local net, I mean, it's local within the VNet. Um, you can't uh, travel outside that. You also have a public net, which is basically end user net, uh, or um, we'll say uh, public facing to the internet or public facing to whoever is using that application. And then you also have a tenant logic. In this particular case, um, uh, you can, we're using manager data center and, and a tenant model where you can use it uh, to essentially manage multiple clusters based on like an MSP and a number of users can pop in and build out their own SDN and build out their own networks, but use a, a same tool for management. Um, so that's essentially the uh, deployment. Um, you can always go in here and edit a switch very, uh, very easily on the fly. Um, and you can essentially, you know, change it to an internal network, to a private network. This is if you want to do VLAN tagging, essentially, uh, obviously you got to make sure your switch supports VLAN tagging. Um, so, um, and um, very important is you have all those options um, to be able to do that, thing, do those things. Um, so if I go here, I can actually go to an individual node and actually create a vSwitch. And this is where I can go in here and say, okay, do you want to, um, you know, make this an internal network? Do I want to make it a private network? Again, this is all software defined. Um, private network, would, there's no concept of VLAN tagging because you don't leave that private network. <laughs> that's why you have, that's why it grays out. Internal networking, you have the ability to leave that network. So that's the essential SDN um, uh, management within Azure. Um, as we get further into uh, MDC um, and further into our feature sets, you're gonna see some of this uh, SDN management even flow up to Azure. So you can basically manage both in one breath. Um, so, I, uh, Sorry, Rob, and, and just to clear something up, and I think that you might have misspoke. So, is the SDN functionality here? Is it is it strictly for Hyper-V, or is it Hyper-V and Azure? And Azure is coming later. It's Hyper-V right now. Azure mm -hmm. is coming later. Okay, and uh, help help, now, the, help the audience. I can go into the Hyper-V management. By the way, if you go into Azure, the, all those SDN management stuff is similar to what you see here. But go ahead. Yeah. I was going to say, so when it comes to uh, a software-defined network, uh, can you can you help the audience understand, um, you know, how much easier Five Nine is making it? You know, kind of where some of the real pains are, how people would natively do it in in Hyper-V, and and what Five Nine ma Manager is doing to bridge the gap. Sure. So natively in Hyper-V, if you didn't have the traditional tool sets, you're doing this in Hyper-V Manager, which is very limited. Um, and on top of that, there are a couple of things that Hyper-V Manager can't do around logical networking and QoS type stuff versus SCVMM is a purchase product from Microsoft. Um, it does have a lot of moving parts. Um, you do have to, it's a lot of prerequisites to get it installed. Um, and it, it, I would say it's not a simplified tool for, uh, and also I would say closely I like to a dedicated admin. Versus MDC, it's very simple, very easy to use. There's a lot of um, even deployment of it. It's pretty straightforward. Install a management server on, on top of Windows Server. Um, has a couple services that we run. And then we uh, basically push out a small lightweight agent over to the VMs that can, uh, can communicate lots of different metrics and statistics back to us um, and information about that so we can do controls. and that's it um, versus, you know, SCVMM. And, uh, you know, SCVMM, when you can't just buy SCVMM. That's another point, big point to say. When you buy System Center, Virtual Machine Manager, you buy System Center. You buy SCCM, SCOM, uh, Operations Manager. You buy the, the entire suite, which is not necessarily what you need to do. Also, uh, a lot of these tools are disaggregated, you know. Um, SCVMM doesn't really have any concept of monitoring. You need to use another tool, which is SCOM, which is essentially another P two moving parts, like a database on its own, and then another web front end, another front end application. So again, you know, having that all baked into Five Nine uh, Manager Data Center gives you that ability to have that, you know, single application, single pane of view, depending on what you're looking at and what context. 
Okay, so if I understand correctly, uh, what you're basically saying is that the Hyper-V manager in and of itself isn't going to give you what it needs. And we no. talk to a lot of customers that uh, you know either don't have SC- SCVMM or have it, but it's not fully implemented or it's really complex. It's kind of like... Uh, um, you know, the five nine manager data center uh, sits somewhere in the middle where it's going to help these customers uh, configure, manage, uh, do everything that they need to do with their software defined network without having the big expense and resource cost of uh, SCVMM. Yep, absolutely. Um, and SCVMM runs much heavier than our products. Um, Getting a little feedback, requires- Rob. Oh, SCVMM along with the rest of the system center projects. If you were going to do equal parity, you probably do SCVMM along with uh, SCOM, and it's a much heavier endurance where you have to have two databases, two instance of a management server, a lot of moving parts. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, any questions on the demo? Any other things I can show? Yeah. Uh, monitoring. There were a couple things that that came through, and I think that this is you know said. So what we'll do is we'll take you know the last uh, a few minutes. We'll go run through f- as many questions as we can, and then I'll take the last minute and we'll go ahead and we'll uh, announce our our winner. So if you do have any remaining questions, uh, please enter them in the chat box now, and uh, we'll go ahead and, and get started, and, and we'll do our drawing fairly soon. Okay. So one question that asked is SDN uh, management a, a, a new module within a uh, uh, five nine manager is it is it is it a paid add on or does it come with it? That's a new module with on it as long as you're under support. When it, uh, what I understand, Ryan, yep. um, it, you can get it with your um, uh, update with your support agreement. Okay. Uh, the next question, specifically on the demo, is what what are we doing for uh, SDN security and and will cloud security uh, support uh, software defined networking? Without going too much into it, yes, <laughs> we're getting into some pretty cool stuff around um, uh, integrating those MDC uh, manager data center along with cloud security, so you can see all this stuff under one application. But uh, it's on our roadmap, but I can't go any further on that particular case. But we definitely are going down that road. Okay, great. So I've got uh, a question here, and it says, uh, we've been deploying, and I'm not sure if this is an acronym, but it might be. We've been deploying UBNT hardware for several years, even replacing a lot of older networks, and find their centralized management software extremely powerful. How does the 5.9 SDN management compare to UBNT's uh, unified management software? Uh, I'm not familiar with UBNT. Okay. Um, I'll have to, but I can actually definitely answer that question um, once I take a look at what I'm not familiar with UBNT. Sure. So, so if you ask that question, uh, we'll follow up with a, a personal email. Rob's going to research that a little bit and and get back to you. Um, sure. Okay, and then the last question that we have here is, I'm struggling to understand the uh, what re- the relationship is between underlying network hardware and an SDN. Are you running SDN management on a device that operates like a router or a gateway to control network traffic? Or does the SDN manager configure all network hardware, which then does the actual rule processing? Depending on your scenario, yes and no. <laughs> Um, you can have virtual switches and virtual routers um, that is, essentially exist on there. Obviously, um, physical hardware definitely need to connect to physical switches. Um, and a lot of that works hand in hand. Um, typically, you'll have some kind of SNMP access or some kind of management access to get in there and configure um, from there. But essentially, you do have to do some configuration. There are some, some cases that it's not automatically done. Um, where you essentially need to do a couple things like put VLAN tagging on on a set of ports or et cetera. But it is very use case specific, so. Okay. All right, well, that's all the questions that we have. Uh, So I'm gonna go ahead and do our, we're gonna be doing a drawing for three $100 Amazon gift cards today. Uh, Jenna, could you give me the three selections, please? Uh, Jenna on my team is gonna go ahead and and give that to me. All right. Um, 
So if your name is Trevor and your last name starts with H, if your name, first name is Michael and your last name starts with G, or if your name is Elizabeth and your last name starts with C, uh, congratulations, you are our winners. Uh, we're going to go ahead and we're going to send you out those uh, uh, gift cards within the next two to three business days. Um, thank you so much for attending, everybody. Uh, I'll go ahead and, and put these into the uh, answer console at the end, but that w she'll... That should conclude today's webinar. Uh, we'll be doing a lot more this uh, upcoming quarter. Uh, so please stay tuned to email and our social media channels for more exciting uh, and educational webinars and to hear more about what Five9 is doing. So again, Trevor, Michael, and Elizabeth, congratulations, and we hope to hear from you soon. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day.